Hi, this is Thomas Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And Megan, we got one of our favorites back. Yep. Emma Bates is here. I'm yeah. your favorite. <laughs> we were. Hey, I tell you, I never got as excited as I did when I saw you coming around Chicago when you're running up that final hill, going in through the thing. We're like, holy cow, how did she get up there? <laughs> running. <laughs> yes, running. We made eye contact, yeah. I believe. Yeah, Always. I was so I'm excited. Like, there was you. nobody on that hill, and that's the hardest thing. It's Mount Chicago out there because yeah. it's flat the whole time, and then you have to go up that little thing. Who put this here? But you were there for me. You were there. Yes. Maeve was there. We yes. were there. Even Brandon was there. I love it. So you had a lot of support. Three people. <laughs> you know, just I cheering. needed it. Thank you guys yeah. so much. It was funny because we texted Mac, and we're like, hey. He's like, I know. It's like a great day. But so anyway, let's get into what we're here for today is Worlds. Meg, I know you have some questions. Yeah. So the last time we talked, one of the things that really stuck with me was that you said you run best when you're happy. Because we've said, you know, some people use anchor or like other emotions to run really well, but you love being happy. So what is bringing you joy right now? Just all the people around me, like I am so lucky to be on a team of people that are just so positive and so empowering and just badass too. Like they just, you know, get their stuff done every single day. And it's so easy to go to practice because it's just like, it's so much excitement. Like we're all going after our same dreams and our same, you know, same goals of like making teams and, you know, making the podium at the world championships or Olympics. And so it's just, that's so exciting. And like to be able to like, grasp like some of my goals um just being amongst them has been something you're talking that, about team boss right yes sorry i should i should have said that yeah. team boss my yeah. team boss uh teammates um is an amazing group of women so that's and providing me the most happiness right now didn't you just become an aunt for the second time i did this morning my sister just had a baby her second so my first niece her name is Saren, and i'm just so excited so i guess that should be yeah, something that's, that's providing me with happiness i'm so running focused right Went now for you know we're with all these athletes and all these <laughs> yeah. shoes but yes my my sister did an amazing job and so i'm so happy to add another another girl to the family when you ran Chicago, it was one of the hottest days I can remember there like for race 70s. day. Um, I think it was close to 80 by the it finish. Was, it was up there. <laughs> so knowing tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Monday, when you guys are racing, I think you have like 50s. Are you excited about this? I actually wanted it to be a little bit hotter because, uh, you know, like, you know you yeah, I'm it. a little masochistic, but <laughs> I have proven that I run well in the heat and I think it is advantageous to me, um, whereas it might not be to other people. Um, but this evens the playing field for everybody, it being a little bit cooler. So I'm excited to see how fast I can run because it's a pretty flat course, too. So that's exciting. I'm going to take you away from running for a minute mm -hmm. because we got some inside information that you enjoy some a lot of food and a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you this? <laughs> I cannot tell you, but it was an ASICS employee. Oh my goodness. Um, so can you tell me what some of your favorite beers are? And like, like, I, I don't even know beers that much. So you got to tell me like, I know sours, pilsners, all mm -hmm. that. But like, give me a rundown of what's good. So this is a thing. I don't know beers that well either. I have celiac, so I can't drink most beers. So the only beers that I can drink are like Mexican lagers or gluten-free beers, which aren't great. They just kind of taste like water. So like my go-to is Corona and Modelo and okay. Pacifico. Like that, those so it three. Fancy. It's like, it doesn't need to be fancy. Like right. Modelo Negro is by far my favorite. And then Corona in the summertime, there's nothing better. So after every long run and workout, I'm just cracking one of those open it's like you know 9 a.m but that's what i do hey, <laughs> gotta get those carbs by that time you've got a full day full day's work in so. exactly yeah. <laughs> so with celiac what uh mm -hmm. are your go-to's for like carb loading um I eat a lot of chips, um, like corn chips, um, and then <laughs> a lot of rice, um, peanut butter and jelly every day. I mean, they have gluten-free bread. There's so many options for gluten-free people um, that it's it's really not that hard. Um, the only thing that I miss are like donuts um, and like bagels aren't the same. So stuff like that is like kind of a bummer. But when did you find out? that this was an issue? That was a freshman year of college. And so I was like, you know, in fetal position every single day, I was in so much pain. Oh, wow. And so um, it wasn't until one of my friends um, who also had celiac was like, hey, you should like try cutting out gluten. And I cut it out for two weeks and felt 
amazing. It must have made, made you feel like a superhero. Oh, completely. And so then all of a sudden I made nationals the next year at Boise State because I was able to actually like get through the day without being, mm. in, you know, I just thought that was normal. Just like growing up, just having, you know, a stomach <laughs> ache every single day. So it was, it was a really amazing thing to, to figure out. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Elkina brought up in the press conference was that he learned was that running with a giant group of people because it's not like where you have five ten elites it's a much larger group are you excited to be running in a large group of all these women um I get a little like overwhelmed when I run in a big group so like when I ran the Olympic trials for the marathon in Atlanta I was like so just like it was sensory overload just like with everybody around me I get a little claustrophobic especially with people so I am excited but I'm also like I need to like just try to like dial it in and like try to kind of put the blinders on a little bit um, in order to like just stay within myself and run my own race. Yeah, I mean Chicago has a pretty decent sized field. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but there's always like so many guys cause it's a, a yeah. male female start. So they are always like, you know, they run like bat out of hell well, I didn't at think the beginning. That, yeah. I didn't think about that making a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, when you, we asked the same question uh, earlier, but how do you get into your mindset right before the race? Like when you're lining up, how do you calm yourself and get yourself ready to race? I try to fold into like the the anxious chaotic energy that I have and try to like not spread it around because I don't want other people to be anxious and chaotic but I like to kind of feed into the energy around me and so I like to chit chat and like kind of laugh and joke and like have a good time because there's so much going on in there and I don't like to suppress it so um, trying to seek out people that are like-minded and have that kind of energy and Kira De Amato is like somebody that I'm really excited to start with because I know that she kind of has that energy too and she's really excited and so I think um it'll be great to just have her at the starting line yeah. so you're not gonna be like Michael Phelps with the hood on and then no headphones honestly on. like music makes me so much more nervous it's just like a trigger so I can't I can't listen to music before right. I race I do think someone asked us on Instagram to ask what your favorite band is right now or your favorite music Favorite, well, band of all time is Led Zeppelin, like right. by far. Yeah, so a little heaven. bit of cashmere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, so when you're sort of, you know, that mile 20, things are getting hard as they always do. Is there anything, like do you have a mantra or anything you, you use to sort of get through those harder miles? Um, whenever I get to that far into the race, I always think of my dad. Um, my dad passed in 2016, but he would always write on a post-it note before all my races, run hard, have fun. And it was something so simple, but like so meaningful because it's just like, what else can you do at that point? But just to run hard and have fun. Like, I mean, don't complicate it. Just, just do what you can and it'll get you to the finish line. Yeah. We just spoke with Steve Magnus. And I'm name dropping, um, <laughs> but he was talking about how top athletes, they can't just go to a mantra. They have to have several tools to control themselves going through a race. Do you find yourself going through stages where you're using different mental tools to help you get through the marathon? So many different stages. And it's, I mean, 26.2 miles. So you have a lot of time to think about a lot of things. Um, so the beginning of the races, I'm always just trying to um, make it as easy as possible. That's kind of like my mantra right now. That's what my coach has been telling me um, at all my workouts and all my long runs is like, um, just get your mind right. Like, you know what point you need to be at and what you need to be thinking about at each stage of the race. Like, just do that every single time you practice and, and do workouts. And so that's something that I've tried to really um, be mindful of is just like trying to not force it. And so just if I feel like I'm a little over my head or if it's getting too hard, just dial it back, make it as easy as possible, which it's never easy, but just again, not being so rigid and um, tense and just trying to relax. So we know what's gonna be on your feet on race morning, but I'm sure everyone wants to know, what are you wearing? The A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus, yes. The plus is important, even plus. though they didn't put it on the shoe. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> it drives me, it drives <laughs> me crazy. <laughs> I was going to ask one more mental question. Yep. I may have forgotten what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the shoes threw you off. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, okay, so an amateur athlete like myself, mm -hmm. I go into a marathon and I have like three goals. Like this would be great to PR. If I don't PR, this would be great. This. Do you go into an event like this with like, a range of what would be good or do you have a specific goal that you're like that's the goal I try not to have a plan B I always focus on plan A which for this race is to podium 
Now, if that doesn't happen, then I'm not going to be disappointed as long as I put everything I can into it. So at the end of the day, if I'm running as well as I possibly can to my ability level and there are still women ahead of me, even if that means, you know, I'm fifth, sixth, tenth, whatever it may be, um, just knowing that I put everything in that race um, is going to be a success in my book. See, This is maybe why I fail so often. <laughs> I've got those backup plans. Because <laughs> you default to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, I'll do it. That's hard. Fine. You're this, like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, like I just keep going back. Yeah, no. All right. Focus on the plan A. All right. Well, we are going to be rooting for you. We'll be out on the course cheering as loud as we can. So we're excited to watch and good luck. Yeah, we'll Thank try to make you. eye contact. Yes, again. yes. <laughs> so I'll be like, watch get up out. that hill. There's no hill. It's just like the little one at the end. <laughs> I'll be waiting for it. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, we always love talking to you. Thanks for having me. All right.